Today I'm going to show you how to remove the swing plate assembly on a HP 4250. This also applies to the 4200, 4300, 4250 models. Typically when it goes bad, you can tell because these output rollers do not spin. Um, either when you turn the machine on or you send a print to it. These will not spin and the paper will just stop right at the fuser. It'll get past the toner cartridge and the leading edge will just typically be stuck right at the entry to the fuser. So first what we want to do is take the paper tray out, remove the other plastics, this top piece just pops off, this back plastic piece, there's a, like a little release, you push in and it just pops out. So I'm going to take the fuser out, two release tabs on the bottom of that. And this piece of plastic we'll want to remove. And then we'll want to remove, well these are already missing, but there's a screw there and a screw there. And the whole formatter just slides right out. Now to remove the top cover. Also some missing screws, but there's supposed to be a screw there, screw there, screw there, and a screw there. All right, to remove the top cover, we need to disengage that, which you just push on. Oh, I need a second hand. Just a little release tab. You can use, either use your fingernail or a flat blade. But while you're pushing on it, just push a little pressure to the left with your other hand. And feed that down through. You want to be careful. You want to be careful with that, that it doesn't get caught on the cover when you're pulling it off. You don't want to knock this off the lower end. Otherwise, you have to take the entire main drive assembly off to reattach it. So now the cover will just lift up. There is a plug right there that we need to disconnect. Also, watch out for that falling out of the cover. That's for if you have a stapler or a stacker option on top of it, but that goes in the top cover back left side it just slides right down in up the top so now to take this side cover off there are two release tabs usually the top one is broken but it's got an arrow there it's just right there and then the second one also has an arrow and you just put your screwdriver down in that while you're kind of pulling on it and it just pops right off so for this side cover same thing release tab right there and also one on top which Usually that one is either loose or broken most of the time, if it's ever been taken apart. You just push in on that, lift up, the cover comes right off. So in the interest of time, typically what I do is I take all the screws out at the same time. So we need to take that one, that one, that one, this one, and that one. To take this cover off and then on the other side this screw this one this one this one these two big ones and this one we want to loosen not take it all the way out just loosen it so the wires we need to disconnect are the two ribbon cables three red wires and the power wires flat blade to release the four power wire plug. Pop it out of the 
this. And when you pull them through the wall, just be very careful not to snag them on anything or break any other wires as you're pulling them through. Once you get the screws out on this side, there are two plugs that go into the power supply. There's this fan plug. Just pull it out and then this thermistor plug. You just pull both of those out and then you are done on this side. Now on this side, we need to take this piece of plastic off. There's just a little push button release there. And then as you're pushing, you just pull it and it pops out. And that covers the power switch rod on the inside. So to disconnect that, you just lift it out. And then on the inside, it's kind of hard to see, but it just pulls down out of the power supply. And then you remove it. Now we want to pull the wires through. Always pull the ribbon cable through first so it doesn't get damaged. And then try to pull the power supply wires and the red wires at the same time. Again, be careful they don't catch on. There's some sensor wires in there. You don't want them to catch and break the sensor wire. So at this point, the power supply is ready to come out. So you just kind of lift up on it. Make sure the power socket there, sometimes that sticks into the frame. So just pull it out, make sure it's loose. And the whole power supply comes out. Now we need to remove this which there, again, is a just a little push release right there. As you're pushing on that, oh, so I forgot to loosen that screw right there. If you don't loosen this screw, that piece of plastic will catch on it and not come out. So push on that release. comes right out. This is the screw we had to loosen. So if you don't loosen that, this will be sticking out a little too far and this piece of plastic will catch on it and not come out. So the last thing we need to do before we loosen the swing plate screws is this piece of plastic. This one has already been destroyed by previous technicians, but there's a release tab on the bottom on the top and then one over on this side closest to the front of the printer. To get this out, release the top one and kind of hold pressure on it. Then release the bottom one, then release the front release tab. And this will pull out without breaking the tabs off so that just hangs there. So you want to be super careful with the three black screws that hold the swing plate in. They're very brittle, very easy to strip. Most people strip them the very first time they do this. It's a much easier repair if you do not strip them. So make sure when you're putting your screwdriver on the screw, don't put any pressure on it until you're ready to turn. And then once you break it loose, 
just screw it out all the way. So there's that one on the back. There's another one right there below that big white gear. And then there's one up at the top. So I will re remove the other two. One at the top is easier to see from the front. That's usually the one that people strip. But get your screwdriver on it. I usually usually put my chest against the frame of the printer just to get some leverage on it. That way it doesn't strip. At this point, the swing plate is ready to come out. So to remove it, I usually grab it like this. And it just comes right out. Now, if you're replacing the swing plate, a lot of the aftermarket ones we've been seeing in the last year or two, the metal is very flimsy, has a tendency to bend when you reinstall the swing plate. So typically what I do is I will take the gears from the new swing plate and I will reuse the metal and the spring from the old one and just put the new gears into the swing plate and use your old metal. So to put it back in, you want to put that piece into the hole right there in the frame. Right there kind of put it in at an angle and then just make sure that all three little tabs are flush with the frame make sure it's fully seated when you put the screws back in So the swing plate is back in. Typically what you want to do is, if this is in the up position, you can see that gear doesn't move very much. Now when I push this down, you can see that retract. It should move freely. Whenever you push on it, it should immediately spring back. One very important reinstallation note as you're putting it back together. Once you get the power supply in, put the fuser back in. And you can see the swing plate gear through this little hole. What you want to do is pull that up. And then when you push down on it, make sure that the swing plate gear goes back in. If the housing of the swing plate is bent, a lot of times you can see that it won't go fully in. And what will happen is the output rollers will not spin, the fuser will not spin. So one part of reassembly I see people struggle with is reattaching this side cover. So the way it goes in is you have these three hooks and those go into that opening, that opening, and that opening. Helps greatly if you have the machine slightly over the edge of the surface that you're putting it back into. But you just line
line those up. And then for the power switch, you want to make sure that little opening goes onto the rod. And then put that little release tab through the frame. But once you have it back on, you want to grab the bottom and just give it a tug. If those are all seated properly, it will not move at all on the bottom. Same thing for this side cover. You have the three hooks on the bottom, the three openings. Just slide it in just like that. Push down on this release tab so it goes in. Push on that release tab so it goes in there. Tug on the bottom, make sure it doesn't come off. And there you go, both side covers are on. Top cover is a little tricky. You need to get the plug into that socket right there. What you want to do is kind of hold the top cover at an angle with your one hand. So after you put the top cover on, you want to reattach toner disengaging lever. Make sure it moves freely. And then you are all set with your brand new swing plate. So typically, if you have time and space to work on this, um, I've done them as fast as 15 minutes from start to finish where I've actually got it powered up and a page is printing out but that was trying to go as fast as I possibly could. Typically, you want to be able to do it in about 20, 25 minutes. If you're in an area where you don't have room to work, you don't have room to put the parts, might take you 30, 35 minutes start to finish. Yeah, very common issue on these, especially when they were brand new. Um, they originally came without a spacer for the gear on the swing plate, so it would chew through that gear in about 35 45,000 pages it would be loud as heck um, after about a, a year maybe two years that these were out they added the spacer so now a swing plate typically will get you anywhere from 200,000 to 400,000 pages before it wears out again hope this video helps you uh, if you have any questions put them in the comments and if you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel.